storms destroy properties worth millions in our district, while our county women leaders tipped on government empowerment programs. This and more in the Nile Cast News Bulletin. You're most welcome in the, to the Nile Cast only on West Nile Television, where we give you the daily news bulletins of the day every day from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. My name's Okumringa Christine. Before we dive into any of the stories, let's first have a look at the news making headlines today. In the headlines tonight, hailstorms destroy property worth millions in Ara district. Ara County women leaders tipped on government empowerment programs. And My Home Care Uganda donates items to needy people in Moyo District. This and more in the Nalcast News Bulletin. It's the 28th of March 2024. You're most welcome to the Nile Cast on your West Nile Television. Now let us dive into some of the stories of the evening. Heavy rains coupled with strong winds destroyed property worth millions of Uganda shillings ranging from buildings, food crops and trees in villages and parishes in Logiri sub-county Ara district. At least 50 households are said to be, have been affected, leaving victims asking the Ministry of Disaster Preparedness and Responsiveness to come to their aid. Farish Majid reports. Heavy rains characterized by strong winds have destroyed property worth millions of Ugandan shillings, ranging from buildings, food crops, and trees in villages and parishes of Logri sub county in Arua district. The heavy rains, coupled with strong winds, took place starting at about 6 pm on Tuesday, 27th of March 2024, leaving many houses deroofed, food crops destroyed, and a number of trees as well demolished. The affected parishes and villages include Adraka, Anyavu, Okavu, Oliba, Ozo, Jiki, and Chiaba where a number of households have no shelter now since the buildings have been destroyed by the downpour. The affected parishes and villages include Adraka, Anyavu, Okavu, Oliba, Ozo, Jiki, and Chia plus surrounding areas where a number of households now have no shelter since their buildings have been destroyed as a result of the downpour. Here are some of the affected persons narrating the ordeal and how the storm has affected them since most locals say it's the first of its kind to happen in the area. I don't know even um, I'm going to do with this, my two children. Because there is no food, we are going to eat. Everything were destroyed, and the roofs were all destroyed, and there is no place where even we are going to cook for these children. Government should uh, maybe, at, uh, even, even yesterday we were about to die because these electric poles were all broken. And unfortunately, the the fire was off. If the if the fire could have been on, it could have died even by this electric pulse. Okay, so which got you to spoil the, the roof of this house, mm -hmm. and then the the veranda, the big house. Mm -hmm. and then secondly, you can see the field of uh, bananas in the valley. Okay. Destroyed completely, and also the community of this area. Okay, the veranda there can be around 700 hours mm. to renovate it. This one here can be around 100. But uh, now, banana plantation, I don't know how much it can cost it. Mm. It is completely destroyed down there in the valley. John Bosco Dama. Who is the Logri Sub County LCT chairman says the property destroyed can be estimated at around 100 million as he believes that the storm could be as a result of changes in climate. Because uh, the destruction is quite enormous, they, it's soon left to be done by the technical team. They, I'm going to send them, they will come and do the assessment. But I think for now, the destruction is over 100 million. Uh, like this one of yesterday, this is totally issues to do with natural, rather, climate change. Because uh, I don't expect anything out of this. Odam, however, says that this is going to cost them in tax collection as a local government. A lot has been destroyed. As government, it is going to affect us in terms of local revenue. Not only local revenue, these are taxpayers who contribute a lot of taxes to the government. And these are business people. A lot of business properties have been destroyed. I am 
kindly appealing to the local, uh, the central government to ensure that these people are at least supported with some kind of help. Similarly, Alioni Bonface, the Arrow District Nationalist and Movement Party Vice Chairperson appeals to the government to come to the rescue of the affected families. And I want to appeal to the minister to look at the people who gave us authority to see that actually the Wanainzi are in good health, in good hands of NRM government. So I want to appeal to the minister, I want to appeal to all officers, all res responsible officers to come to the aid of these affected people. Some of the people, they are now homeless. Some of these the roofed houses, people were living in them. But right now they are not there. So this is a real disaster which needs an urgent attention. Alun went on to add that some of the affected farmers are parish development model beneficiaries as expresses worry on how they will be able to refund the monies. Most of the affected farmers, they are parish development model farmers. Uh, actually we are wondering, I'm now wondering how these PDM farmers are going to be able to repay back uh, to, to the circles, to, to their parish circles. No injuries and deaths were ever reported by press time in the disaster as at least 50 households are said to be affected and now they ask Minister of Disaster Preparedness and Responses to come to their rescue. Farish Majid, West Nile TV, Nalcast. And more in our stories, Honorable Kuching Grace Freedom, the State Minister for Northern Uganda, has urged women leaders from the seven local government units of Ora County to embrace presidential initiatives on job and wealth creation. Alfred Jawok has more. Women leaders from seven local government units in Ora County in Zombo District have been challenged to embrace presidential initiative on jobs and wealth creation. This was revealed by Honorable Kushin Grace Freedom during the sensitization of women on how to embrace government programs so as to empower the women in rural areas. During the meeting held to Warokemo Primary School playing ground, Zombo District, Honorable Kushin Grace urged the women leaders to change narratives of other women on government programs like Uganda Women Empowerment Program, OEP, Parish Development Model, PDM, M Yoga, among others. From the parish level, in sub county and in the district, we had women group leaders, we had religious leaders, we had women councillors, and women council at all levels. When we came to do a follow up, a monitoring of government programs, how they were faring, according to what the Prime Minister directed us to do, when I met the women, they told me that they have been elected into leadership, but they do not know their roles and they do not know what to talk about. They don't know what government is doing. And that really sent a message into my heart, and I thought, let me come back for a one day meeting and then we sensitize them about government programs and what they can do about uh, support to government programs and to themselves because all government programs are for the people. Our policy, our government policy is a pro-people policy. So all what government is doing is for the betterment of the people. Like the PDM is for economic empowerment of the people. It's also for the increased production for the people, so that they can have uh, food, but they can also have income. And they can process and add value for some of the bulk production, so that they can get better income. Meanwhile, Samuel Ochake, Zombo District Community Development Officer, said they have registered drastic improvement in enrollment of women to access government programs through community sensitization like Health Today. It tasks the women to be responsible to take care of their families. And within the private sector. And that's why you also can see we have Uganda Development Bank also here as an institution that can support women entrepreneurs to build their own capacities and businesses. So basically we are here on an empowerment mission to ensure we give our women information, information that can help them build their own businesses, that can help them start their own businesses, but above all to ensure that our women, our grassroots women can build income and improve on their household income and therefore improve on their general livelihoods because we know development starts at the family level. However, Uyulu James Rona, Zumbu District Chairperson, remarked that over 300 women leaders 
received OEP and PDM funds and is optimistic that the women will perform better than men who do not value government programs. Grace team, the deputy RDC Zombo district, revealed that government has introduced several programs to help vulnerable women who cannot afford paying school fees and businesses. She urged Zombo women to appreciate the president of Uganda, His Excellency Yorika Gutama Seveni, for eradicating poverty from each household. The women leaders from Oraya constituency confide here. We were reawakening them on what the government has on the ground for them. We got, we made them to know that the government is... So this Baraza deal really came and One thing that really touched me the most is the way uh, PDM has been taken up by our community. In fact, now we are almost at 90% in disbursement of the, 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 other, the money that was given us for last financial year. And the leaders have also benefited. So now we have informed, we have told them that it is their role as leaders to see this uh, PDM succeed in the community. Because they, they have to be exemplary. They have to show the people that what the government has given them is a seed capital that can multiply. Among the dignitaries who attended the meeting include officials from Uganda Development Bank, Shapasons Local Council 3 in Ora County, women leaders among others, Alfred Jawok, West Nile TV, Nile Cast. And more in our stories, 30 elderly and vulnerable persons from the three sub-counties of Aluru, Moyo and Moyo Town Council have received Easter gifts from a community-based organization called My Home Care Uganda in preparation for the Easter celebrations in Moyo District. Okumo Dominic reports. The Easter gifts were taken to each beneficiary in the three sub-counties of Aluru, Moyo and Moyo Town Council with each sub-county having 10 beneficiaries who were identified by the volunteers. Mrs. Tarakwe Kevin, a staff of My Home Care Uganda, said the purpose for the gift is to share the joy of Easter with the vulnerable passions in the communities. She appeals to the public to come together and support the vulnerable passions in their communities, saying such people are very many in the communities, yet they cannot receive the necessary help they deserve. Sister Atia Bena, a midwife and a volunteer with My Home Care Uganda said what the experience from the field indicates that the beneficiaries appreciate the little support they received, which to her is a blessing because the organization began with nothing, but at least now there is something little to offer the beneficiaries. She adds that the experience they got from the field builds them to manage different challenges in their homes since such people also do exist in various homes. Seeing is they appreciate because uh, we have started from zero where they don't get uh, what we have really given for them. Since we have given, most of them appreciate what we are doing. And we also feel so good because we feel we are really doing what is supposed to be done for our people especially for the vulnerable. Of course, we, we, it also affects us in a, in a way. We also have the same people in our own homes. And when we do for the needy, we also we know we are helping our own people. 
and it gives us that you know uh, interest to care for for the vulnerable which we can uh, emulate in our our lifestyle muse emilio edemani one of the beneficiaries thanked my home care uganda for the gift being extended to him saying this will go a long way in improving his feeding habit since he mainly eats porridge mama in your tear immaculate another beneficiary lauded my home care uganda for the support and invoked god's blessings on the people who taught about them even during these difficult times of economic hardships everywhere mrs tabea josephine the daughter and caregiver to muse emilio said the support is very important in the sense that muse rarely eats food but often takes porridge which also requires a lot of sugar saying this support came timely and it will go a long way in helping muse eat something at least on daily basis my home care uganda a local community based organization registered last year with the aim of offering support and care for the elderly and vulnerable persons who cannot provide for themselves is currently operating in three sub counties within moyo district namely moyo town council moyo sub county and aluru sub county with the aim of extending its services to three other sub counties in the district the organization managed to distribute food items such as sugar millet flour soap buckets and jerry cans to 30 beneficiaries both male and female in aluru Moyo Sub County and Moyo Town Council in a space of two days. I'm Dominic Antonio Kumu for West Nile TV, Nile Cast. And more in our stories, General Muhozi Kainur Gaba has officially taken over the office of the Chief of Defense Forces and vowed to improve on the welfare of soldiers by fighting evil of corruption and mismanagement of resources. Take a look. General Muhozi Kainugaba has officially taken over the office of the Chief of Defense Forces and vowed to improve on the welfare of soldiers by fighting the evil of corruption and mismanagement of resources. The ceremony, which took place at the UPDF 4th Division Headquarters in Gulu, was presided over the Special Presidential Advisor on Defense and Security and also the Chief Coordinator for Operation Wealth Creation, General Salim Saleh. General Saleh congratulated General Badi and General Muhozi upon their tour of duty and implored them to continue preserving their health. He also urged them to cautiously uphold the first pillar of Museveni economics, that security of life and property for social economic transformation. Taking over as a 13th CDF, General Muhozi Kainurugaba promised that the UPDF under his charge would continue to be professional, moral and tackle comprehensive national security. General Muhozi applauded President Museveni for his wise stewardship that has grown the UPDF to what it is today. Christina Kumaringa, for us now, television, now cast. headlines in the world of sports. In front of the camera is me, Benson Pastore. I can confirm to you after the international break, all the domestic leagues right from Africa 
ASEAN countries also in Europe, they are bouncing back, including those ones in South America. The last one week, it has been international break outgoing, and I want to confirm to you, Star Times Uganda Premier League is bouncing back. Before we take a look at the games to be played uh, over the weekend in English Premier League, I need to give you the drafted fixers of English, not English Premier League, Star Times Uganda Premier League, starting from today, tomorrow, and Saturday, not forgetting about Sunday, I can confirm to you right now there is a game going on between the team of Kasashiro and the team of Busoga. I mean Kese and the team of Busoga. This game started at 7 p.m. East African time. It's going on so, so well. And then tomorrow there is a very big class. It's called top of the table class between Ball and the team of Airtel Tsitara. Why I'm saying it is the top of the table class is because the two teams maintaining the log uh, they are facing off between themselves. Right now, Bull is second, and the team which is on top is Airtel Chitara. They will be facing off tomorrow, and the kickoff time is 4 p.m. East African time. Bull is having 39 points. Meanwhile, the team of Airtel Chitara is having 43 points. And also, as Chitara will be locking horns with Bull, there will also be one game on the card. Wakiso Giants will be also locking horns with Nekevs. It's also Kampala Derby, but it will be taking place at the Kavumba Recreation Center. Meanwhile, on Saturday, two games will also be bouncing back. Sports Club Villa, the Jogos, will be taking on Mbara City. After that, expect a huge game between URA and the tax collectors up against tax collectors up against the Venoms, I mean Vipers. And on Sunday, as people will be celebrating Easter Sunday, on the other side, two teams will also be locking horns. I mean, Nelson Sekatuka, Soltino Bright Stars will be sitting at home as they take on Gaddafi. Briefly highlighting the top of the table. Right now, as I had said earlier on, the team which is maintaining the log is Air Tertitara with 43 points, being followed by Bull FC with 39 points. Third on the log is Neck FC with 37 points. Fourth is the team of Sports Club Villa with the 36, and the team that completes top five is Vipers with the 35 points. Meanwhile, down in the relegation zone, we have a Royal Sports Club with only five points. They are no longer into the competition because they were nullified. We have got Busoga and UPDF. These are the teams that are battling for relegation. Let's jet away from what is happening in Times Uganda Premier League. This time, we take a look at the famous league in Africa. I am talking about, it's not, it's not in Africa, but Africans love it so, so much. I am talking about English Premier League. It's again bouncing back over the weekend. The early kickoff game will be a class between Newcastle, the Magpies, as they will be welcoming Hammers, I mean West Ham. It will be the early kickoff of the day, 5.30 is when West Ham will be traveling to St. James Park to take on Newcastle. And then after that, 6 p.m., we'll witness so many games on the card. Bonham up at Vitality will welcome Everton. Burnley travels away to Stamford Bridge to take on Chelsea. Nottingham Forest at the same time will be locking horns with the Crystal Palace. Meanwhile, Fulham will have to visit us in Sheffield United. Spurs will be staying at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as they welcome newly promoted side called Luton Town. And Aston Villa in the late kickoff of the Day of the day, that's on Saturday. Each Saturday will welcome Wolves, and this game will be at Villa Park. And 11 p.m. is when Manchester United will be maintaining the theater of dreams, Old Trafford, as they take on Brentford. And on Sunday, the biggest class will be top of the table class between the team of Arsenal as they take on Manchester City. This game will be at Etihad Stadium. The first league of this game ended by a goal to nil. It was Gunners that won it. This time, they are traveling away to Etihad. Then apart from that, at 5 p.m. East African time, there will be a game between Liverpool and the team of Brighton and Hove Albion. The game between Manchester City and the team of Arsenal will be at 7.30 East African time. And of course, the viewers will also be interested in knowing how the table is looking like. I can confirm to you the team which is uh, currently leading the table in English Premier League is the Gunners. Arsenal with 64 points, followed by Liverpool also with 64 points. But the Gunners, they have a superior goal difference compared to that one of Liverpool. Third on the log is Manchester City with 63 points. And the team which completes top four in English Premier League is the team of Aston Villa with 56 points, still continue with the table standing. Fifth on the log is the team of Spurs with 53, and Manchester United completes the top six with something of around 43 points.
Let's now finalize our sports news tonight with what is happening in UEFA Champions League. It's not the men's Champions League. This time I want to bring something unique in women UEFA Champions League. I can confirm to you the games have already proceeded to the semis. Two teams have already sealed the ticket to the semifinals. I can confirm to you the last season's runners-up. I am talking about the team of Chelsea. They already threw to the semis, I mean semifinals, after beating Ajax by the win. They actually, in aggregate, they have won 4-1 against Ajax Amsterdam ladies from that year Divisier. Yesterday they played on to one all tie, but before that in the first league they won it by three goals to nil. I mean Chelsea they already threw. Another team which is already through to the same is, is the team of Olympic Lyon ladies. Yesterday night we saw them uh, uh, humbling aside Soccer Lisboa Benfica ladies and in aggregate they have progressed by six goals to two. First league ended 2-1 and yesterday they won again a soccer Lisboa Benfica by four goals to two and the teams that will be completing the slot to the semi-finals will be happening tonight. Paris Saint-Germain, also a team from France, will be battling it out with a team called Hakem that comes from Sweden and not only that, that's the defending champions, Barcelona ladies, of course, will also take on a team called the Bran. Bran is actually a team that comes from Norway. I am talking about women UEFA Champions League. The record champions are Olympic Lyon. They have, they, have, they have won the competition eight times more than any other team. And Barcelona, I want to repeat it again, they are the defending champions after beating Chelsea ladies last season. That one brings us to the end of today's edition of Nalka Sports News. Tomorrow, I'll still be here in the studios of West Nile Television to give you again what is happening in the world of sports. Thank you, Rako Benson, for story for that sports news and that sports highlight. That viewer marks the end of the now cast only on West Nile Television. Thank you always, viewers, for taking the time to be with us from the beginning of the now cast to the end of the now cast only on West Nile Television. Please stay tuned to the rest of the subsequent programs that may follow.